Well, it is Thursday and I am back in the office. I was in Media, Pennsylvania this morning, represented a client in Delaware County, then came back to the office in Morristown, New Jersey, to see some clients in the afternoon session. Put out a blog article regarding simple assault versus aggravated assault and explaining those two different criminal charges following the arrest of an NBA player who was arrested before a game. Him and another player allegedly got into some of an argument. A punch was thrown. Apparently, the player who threw the punch, it was unprovoked. The player who we're calling the victim had some injuries. It happened in front of a police officer, from my understanding, that formed the probable cause for the arrest. The, the player was arrested. I don't think the case is going anywhere, but the point of the article was we'll explain simple assault, which is what this player is charged with. It's a misdemeanor in Arizona, which is where this case happened. It happened in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, there was a game between the Phoenix Suns and the Detroit Pistons. The the, the player, Isaiah Dexter, um, was charged. He's, he plays for Detroit. And the other player, uh, Mr. Eubanks, was char uh, was not charged. He's the alleged victim in the case. Again, I don't think the case is going anywhere. It's a misdemeanor case. I believe more than likely he'll receive, receive some type of diversion program. If the case even gets that far, there's a possibility the prosecution might just withdraw it. Uh, for various reasons, including the victim or the alleged victim himself may not want to cooperate and the two players may simply work it out. Now, that being said, the prosecution can push the issue and force a victim to testify. I don't think that'll happen in this case only because the of the high profile nature of it and probably it's very unusual to have something like this happen. So I'm not sure what actually occurred. It could have been a police officer who just witnessed something. But again, in that article, which I'll link into this video, I explain aggravated assault versus simple assault, the aggravated assault being the felony charge. In addition, I explained about diversion who's eligible for it. I believe this player, if it went any further, he would be eligible for diversion. Now he may face discipline from the NBA, completely separate issue. In addition, put out a blog article regarding the domestic violence issues in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And I worked in the incident regarding Travis Kelsey. Now, I'm not saying Mr. Kelsey is has committed domestic violence or he's an abuser or any of that. But people have asked, hypothetically speaking, if a relationship went south, could they use something like that as evidence? And the answer is yes, they can. Now, is it is it weighty evidence? No. But Obviously, in a case where they're alleging domestic violence, you can use anything provided that it falls within the rules of evidence with regards to, say, hearsay or authenticity evidence or the best evidence rule. So again, these can all be admissible. Now, whether or not that would help a domestic violence case, if hypothetically there, there was one, that's another story. Obviously, if you want to show a pattern of violence, obviously not toward the alleged victim, you could introduce that. There may be an objection, but the court may, would probably consider that uh, just perhaps just to show some type of pattern. Now, whether or not the court gave it a great amount of weight, I can't say on that, but I wrote the article. I wanted to explain the domestic relation policy, both in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and pretty much everywhere. Victims are entitled to representation, and so is the alleged abuser. So, that, so that's an article that I'll also link in. Finally, tomorrow is Friday, our weekly e-update, which will round up our most popular blog articles. will go out to more than 4,000 of our current and former clients in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, some fantastic articles. In addition, I'll link in the monthly mail newsletter that we put out in February, it rounds up our most popular content. But once again, if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. Have a great Thursday, and I'll talk to you all soon. Visit the website, gambonelaw.com. As always, a tremendous resource for you and your family. All my books, my blogs, my videos are available there, including my latest blog articles. Going to be working on some new podcasts. We've gotten away from the podcast. Uh, we, we've been very busy in the office, but I do want to start the podcast back up, try to get some new guests on the podcast, some interesting articles. But once again, if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. Again, have a great Thursday, and I'll talk to you all very soon.